Hey guys, and welcome to my tutorial on setting up vaulting. Uh, so like always, before we go ahead and start coding it, I just want to show you exactly what it will look like when we're all finished. Uh, so as you can see here, I have a little uh, example world set up with some different ledges we can clamber on or vault on. So the way it works is uh, if it's just a small ledge like this, it doesn't even bother giving you the option to vault because you can just walk on it. And same with this one, it's, it's still low enough for your character to walk up on, so it doesn't bother with vaulting. Um, but once you encounter a ledge that's uh, too high to walk upon, it will give you the option to vault with the space bar. And so if you press space instead of jumping, it will do a vault. And then it will work for multiple heights. So you can see I can also vault this one, even though it's a little higher. And then once they get to a certain height, it will eventually stop allowing you to vault. But you can always jump and then vault. So as long as you are high enough, um, or you know, you're high enough and you're close to the ledge, it will allow you to vault, even if you're in the air. So you could do something like this where you jump across. Oops, I didn't press it in time. Um, kind of like Halo 5 where you can jump and vault across and like ledge grab more or less. So it's a pretty dynamic system. Um, and then eventually, like once you get too high, like I can't, this one's too high even if I jump. So there is a limit and those limits are totally configurable. And then a couple other things worth noting. So it also handles the case of like having a slope wall. So obviously you can't vault up this uh, because it's, too much of a slope, um, but this one is going to allow you to vault because even though there's a slope, it's still a walkable slope, so it's okay with that. And then it also um, checks to make sure that you're going to fit in the area that you're vaulting to. So you can see this one on the right here, it allows me to vault because there's plenty of room above my head, but this one on the left, it doesn't give me the option to vault because there's no, uh, there's no room for me to fit inside of here. So yeah, it works in pretty much all cases. I tried to make it really robust. And so yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right into it then. So all I have over here, this is just a totally new project using the first person template. And I am using version 4.26. However, I don't think there's anything in this project that you need to be on 4.264. I'm sure this will work in older versions, but in case you were curious, I'm on 4.26. So as you can see here, this is just the default first person template. And this is what we will be starting with. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my other project over here, just so I can uh, have something to reference. And then we'll go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here to the content folder, and then we're going to right click and hit new folder. And we're just going to call this vaulting. And we're just doing this for organization's sake, just so that all of our vaulting code can go inside of here. So let's open this guy up. And we want uh, three things. So we'll just go ahead and make them now so we don't have to do it later. Uh, the first thing we want is the vaulting components. So if you right click and go to blueprint class and then go to actor component, we want to call this the vaulting component. And I'm just going to hit this little button here because I like to have this side view open as well. And then the next thing we need is the widget that shows up. So right click user interface widget blueprint, and we will call this the um, vault widget and then finally we want one more which we'll make use of later and it's going to be an enum so if you right click and then i think it's under blueprints and then it's under enumerations or enumeration we want to select this and we will call this the vaulting state and if you're not familiar with enumerations are i'll kind of explain them later but for now let's just open this up because this will just take a moment to fill out so this is basically going to keep track of the current state of the vault. So we want to have three states. We want to have one for not vaulting, one for wanting to vault, like you're next to a ledge that's vaultable, but you haven't quite pressed the button yet. And then we want the third one to be actually vaulting itself. So we're going to come over here to the right and hit this new button three times to add three new states. And so like I just said, the first one's going to be called not vaulting. The next one's going to be called wants to vault. And then the third one's going to be called vaulting. And again, we'll come back and make use of this later. I just figured we'd create it now since there's only like three little things we need to create. So just save that and close it. And then we're good. So I'm going to do a file save all real quick and we can get started. So the majority of our code is going to be inside of this vault component. Um, and we'll have a little bit of code inside of the character as well, but the majority of it's going to be inside of here. So um, let's see, where should we start? Let's go to our vaulting components. Let's open this guy up. 
And then where did it open? Oh, it opened right here. Okay, so in the event graph, go to the event graph if you're not already there. Uh, we want to do a couple things inside of begin play. So the first thing we want to do is we want to save a reference to our owning character, which is going to be the player in this case. And the reason we're doing that is because, well, we're going to need access to it in a bunch of different places. And instead of casting to it every time, we can just cast it here once at the beginning and then save a reference to it and it'll make things a little bit more optimized. So we'll say, right click, get owner. So this is going to return our owner, which is the player, but you can see it's just an actor reference. So we want to say cast to first person character or whatever character you happen to be using. So cast to the character class, and then we can right click and say promote to variable. And that will create a variable over here on the left. And then I'm going to press F2 to rename it and call it the owning character. And then I'm going to add this to a category called private. And this is just something I like to do to keep things organized, to separate my private, my publics, and my constant variables. And then I'll select the private keyword. Um, and so if you don't know what private does, I'll just explain it real quick. It basically just makes it so that this variable or any variable that's marked as private is not accessible from outside of that class. So somebody else could not modify this variable, um, which is good because obviously we don't want other people changing this variable besides us. Okay. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to create the widget, which shows up. We don't necessarily want to show it yet, but we just want to have it available and created so that when we get next to a ledge, we can spawn it. So we can right click and say, create widget. And the widget we want to create is obviously our vault widget. And then the owning player is going to be the player controller of our owning character. So we can say owning character. And unfortunately you can't say get player controller, but you can say get controller. And then since we know that this is a player, we can take this and say cast to player controller. And then we can right click convert to pure cast since we know it's going to succeed and hook it up to there. And then we want to save this guy as well. So we can right click and say promote to variable. And we will call this the um, vault widget. And we're going to drag this into the private category as well and also mark it as private. Okay. So that's kind of our setup. The next thing we want to do is start writing the code to figure out whether or not we can vault. So let me just run my other project real quick. So this is something that actually needs to happen um, inside of tick because as you can see here, it's checking each frame whether or not this little uh, widget at the bottom needs to show up. So we need to implement the event tick. So if we right click, we can say event tick. All right, so inside of here, we need to check for a few things because obviously we don't, um, like we don't need to check if we can vault if we're already vaulting. So we really only wanna check if we can vault if we are not vaulting. And that's why we made that enum from before. So to make use of that enum, let's come over here on the left and create a new variable and we will call it the uh, vaulting state. And then on the right, we can change the type of it. So we want it to be of type E vaulting state, which is that enum that we created at the beginning. And then we want to also set this guy to private. So we'll say private and move him to the private category. Okay. So what we can do is we can drag this guy in and we can say git, and then we can drag off of it and do a switch and then hook this up to the event tick. And so what this is going to tell us is the current state of the vault. So we only want to do the logic to check whether or not we can vault if it is currently set to no vaulting. And then one thing I'm gonna do real quick, or real quick is just collapse these into a macro because we're gonna be using this in other places. It's just a little bit cleaner. So if you select both of these and then right click, you can say collapse to macro and it will make a new macro for you over here on the left. And then we're just gonna to have to fix it up real quick. So if we come in here, uh, all we wanna do is take it so that, or drag each one of these pins into the output and that will add an output for it. So it should basically look like this when you're finished. And then we can come back here and you can see it looks a little bit nicer. And then maybe we'll rename this to switch because it's a switch statement, uh, switch vaulting state. Okay. So like I was saying before, we only want to do the can vault check if we are not vaulting. So the first thing we need to do is make the can vault function. So up here on the left, 
we will make a function and we call it can vault. So obviously the responsibility of this function is going to be to return true or false, whether or not we're in a valid place to vault. And then this is public and we actually wanna leave it as public because we're gonna to need to call it from the player as well. So we're just gonna add this to a public category. And then this needs to return two function or two uh, two outputs. So if we select this guy and then over here on the right, we want to add two outputs. So the first one is going to be a boolean, and we will just call this result. So this is going to be true or false depending on if we can vault. And then the next thing, so add one more parameter and make it a vector, and this is going to be called the ending location. And so what this is going to be is essentially the where the player is going to be once the vault finishes. And we need this information, obviously, so that we can move him from, you know, where he's starting to to where he needs to end to. Okay, so we'll come back and fill this out here in a second, but I just want to go back to the event graph real quick and hook that up. So we will drag in this can vault and we will hook it up to not vaulting because, again, we only want to do this if we are not currently vaulting. And then from here, we will do a branch. And so if we can vault, then the first thing we want to do is we want to save this ending location. And I think I spelled that wrong. Hold on. Let me come back in here. Yeah, I did. I added an extra L or something. There we go. Ending location. Okay. So yeah, we want to save this ending location. So we can right click on the ending location and say promote to variable. And hook it up to the true, like so. Let me just add some reroute nodes. So if you just double click on a line, you can add a reroute node. It will just kind of make it a little bit cleaner. And so if we can vault, then we want to do that. And then we also want to show that widget. So we will drag in our vault widget. And we want to add it to the viewport, but we only want to add it to the viewport if it's not currently in the viewport, because it might already be on the screen, right? So we can drag off of this and say is in viewport. And that will tell us whether or not it's already in the viewport. And then we actually want to know if it's not. So we're going to drag off of this and say not Boolean. So we'll know if it's not in the viewport. And then from there, we can do a branch and hook this up. So all this is checking again is if the widget's not already in the viewport. And so if it's not, then we can drag it in again. And we can say add to viewport, like so. And then we want to come back here now and handle the false case. So in the event that we cannot vault, we just want to make sure that the vault widget is not on the screen. So we kind of want to do the same thing, except we don't want to do the not here. So we're going to copy these three nodes without the not, copy and paste, and hook this up, and then hook this up. So it's checking if the widget is currently on the screen. And of course, if it is, we want to remove it. So we'll drag in this guy again and we'll say remove from parent okay so that's everything we need to do inside well that's everything we need to do for the can vault at least so the next thing we need to do is actually come inside of this can vault function and fill it out so well actually i guess before we do that we can kind of test that this is sort of working so for right now let's just come inside a can vault and let's just check this return true just so it always returns true and then we will come back to our character, which we haven't been to yet, actually. So let's go to our content folder and then find your character. So I'm just going to click on him right here in the world and then click over here to open up his blueprint. So just to kind of test this, let's go ahead and add the vaulting component to our character. So we'll say add component. We want to add the vaulting component. And you'll see it over here. And then I think that might be all we need to do to get it to show up. So if we play this now, oh, well, we haven't actually made the widget yet. So that might help. So um, this code probably is running and it probably is showing our widget, but our widget's currently empty. So let's just add something to our widget real quick so we can um, go ahead and see it showing on the screen to make sure it's working. So let's come back here to the content folder and let's open up the vault widget. All right, so inside of here, um, it's gonna be pretty straightforward. So we wanna add a border, it's just so we'll have some background color. So search for border and drag it onto the canvas panel. And for the border, we wanna anchor it to the center of the screen. So select anchor point and select center. And then we want to zero out the position X and the position Y. 
And then for the size, we can just leave it because we're gonna check size to content. So it's gonna to size to whatever size it needs to be. And then for the alignment, we wanna set it to zero, oops, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, so that it's centered. And then inside of the border, we wanna add a horizontal box. So add a horizontal box to the border. And then inside of the horizontal box, we wanna add text. So we'll add a text, the horizontal box. And then, so this text is going to, oh, let's change, uh, let's real quick go back to the border and let's change the brush color to something other than white so we can actually see the text. I'm just gonna change it to 000, with like all black. And then I'm gonna set the opacity to like 0 0.5 or something. And so now we can actually see our text. So this text we wanna set to um, whatever key you wanna use for the vaulting action. So I'm just gonna say space. And then inside of the horizontal box next, we wanna add a spacer. So drag that onto the horizontal box. And the order here does matter, so make sure the spacer is after the space. If it's not, you can drag it around or you can use these little arrows and it will it will switch it from the left side to the right side. But yeah, so make sure the spacer is on the right. And then we just wanna add some amount of space to it. So we'll just say like 40. And then we wanna add another text. So drag that onto the horizontal box as well and make sure it's the last thing. And then we wanna just say vault because that's what it's gonna do. So this is basically the widget that's gonna show up. Um, oh, I think I actually moved it down a little. So if, if you wanna move it down, just simply click on the border and then you can add some sort of position offset to it. So we'll just say like 150, just so it's not right in the middle. Okay, so if we go ahead and run this now, you can see that the widget shows up on our screen. And this is fine for right now because this is exactly what I would expect it to do because all we've done so far is we've added the vault widget to our character. And then inside of the vault, or sorry, inside of the vault component, which we've added to our character, inside of the event tick, it's just constantly checking if we can vault. And then it's just returning true all the time because we haven't written this function yet. And then since it's true, it's showing the uh, it's showing the widget. So, so far, so good. I know we haven't really got to the vaulting yet, but we got a good amount of the setup done. So I think we'll go ahead and do, or continue the vaulting in part two. So I'll see you guys in part two.